Nigerians are saying that all politicians are the same. And you told uh, the young journalists, all of them that work for News Central, you told them that the problem of Nigeria is not Nigeria, it is politicians. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria decided that he wanted to make the National Assembly members happy by providing them brand new vehicles that cost a whopping sum that is the dream of so many Nigerians, but they just could never touch. There is not one member of the National Assembly that rejected this vehicle, not even members of Labour Party in the National Assembly. What does that tell you about the quality and caliber of human beings that are called Nigerians that are in the National Assembly? If you recall when I, when I mentioned to the young ones, very energetic, hardworking young ones, in this facility, I said that we are the problem. I didn't exclude myself. I said we, the politicians, are the problem. I didn't exclude myself. And always I was um, discussing with somebody yesterday, and I said to him, I read philosophy. And in philosophy, there's a, a topic called syllogism. And it says that when you have over 75%, you can't generalize without committing fallacy of generalization. In Nigeria, 95% of the politicians are the same. So the 5% remain is very negligible. What we are saying is how do we get one that will say, okay, I've had somebody confront me and said, okay, Peter, you wasted energy and time, and you save money. And when you were leaving government, you left a huge amount of money. So tell me, which price did you get from doing that? Every other person took money and they are enjoying themselves today. You said you don't want to take the pension given to you as governor. So what difference does it make? You would have had a house in Abuja, a house in Oka, government is maintaining you. So it is a general thing that we've all agreed. That's why I always say this is a criminal entity organ hijacked by criminals. The only way it can work is to dismantle it. But I know that if you have a leadership that can Govern with determination, it can dismantle it. I have been a state governor, and I know what you mentioned with National Assembly is not the buying of the vehicle, but the impact on the society is far worse. Tell me how you can have the National Secretary of National University Commission recently said that Nigerian universities are in urgent need of PhD holders. I can't I ask myself, who wants to be a PhD holder? If you become a PhD holder, you're employed as a graduate assistant level two or so in university. Your salary it's 150,000 Naira. Let me be generous and give you 200,000. That means in one year, you earn 2.4 million. Let's say it's 2.5 million. 2.5. If you decide as a PhD holder with 2.5 million Naira, Salary, annual salary to buy the car they've given to somebody whose only qualification is secondary school, it will take you 64 years. So, what so do we? Why would anybody want to be a PhD holder? The level of criminality amongst our politicians is a disincentive to people for, who want to for, study. 
is when we talk about corruption, the reason why, because this is corruption, the reason why it is bad for society is that corruption kills entrepreneurship. Nobody thinks in a corrupt country. I said every day, why would I work hard to create a business and suffer to grow the business when I can make more money from being a politician? So you don't see people struggling to build business. Corruption kills professionalism. Why am I going to work out to MPAD, recite to be a professor? Because what I told you now, for a professor, is double the salary, 400,000, if he's paid. Why will I struggle to be a professor? In fact, if you're a professor, your salary, like I said, is 400,000 monthly, 4.8, so call it 5 million annually. For four years, without spending your money, you earn 20 million as a professor. One month salary of National Assembly member is 21 million. Why do you want to be a professor? So corruption kills entrepreneurship, kills professionalism. So would you advise the president it to work. do? Would you advise the president to do what he has done to the Supreme Court by increasing by three hundred percent all university God, they, I'm going to, for me <laughs> as president, we're going to dismantle this criminality. Everybody have to come at the same level, and we discuss the future of the country. And I say it is not that. Kade, this is something that is verifiable. I was governor of a state. I was impeached within six months. You know that. Mm -hmm. Of being a governor. And what was the problem? My own office as governor, there was a budget to renovate my office because it was burnt. The budget to renovate it was 298 million. I spent 42 million 300,000. That was my number one offense. Number two offense was that in my lodge, where I lived as governor, the entire budget, to, it was also bought because they had a crisis before I came in. The budget to renovate the visa was 486 million. I spent 81 million in doing everything. That was my number second offense. Number th the third offense was that I was saving money. Everybody knew, you can go to Suka and verify. When I came, when I became governor, no permanent secretary in Anambra State had a car. No judge had a car. And I said, no. I went to Pijo. Still on record that I was about the highest number of people ever bought by government when I was governor. I went there and said, supply us 50 vehicles, 406. And in my first year, for four years, the vehicle I used as governor, it was 406. Permanent secretary, everybody was using the same car. 406 for the four years in my first year. You can go, these are things that you can go and verify. And we shut down. Shut down the office of First Lady. Because they had more money than some of my ministries. So I said, hey, wait a minute. What is this? Nobody voted this woman. It's my wife. We love her. We live in the same house. But he didn't campaign. Nobody voted for her. He should have had his own, her own convoy, even with ambulance and everything, creating additional confusion that it was just supposed to exist. We shut it down. Let me go back to the budget, uh, budget that was initially proposed as 27.5 trillion, while 28.7 trillion was passed by the National Assembly and signed by the President. Who do we blame for those situations where we are bleeding money for every questionable things while our debt continues to skyrocket and we're struggling with high fuel costs, high food costs, high inflation, and people are saying, we're hungry. Where do we put the blame? Squarely on the man who is in charge. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Period. Nobody else. He is the man voted for. He is the man they declared the winner. 
Why did you say they declared him winner? <laughs> well, that's the thing. It was declared winner. Okay. Yeah, so, so he's the one who is responsible. Mm -hmm. No other person. That's why I told you I was impeached. Because I was, in, I was the man they elected. That's why I can abolish First Lady Office, abolish everyone, and determine that I'm going to change this place. And they can do that. Comfort. Look at our debt, rising irresponsibly. Cardi, there's nothing wrong in borrowing. Borrowing for any government globally is accepted. People make reference with every other country today. I've compared so many countries with the issue of borrowing. Even country people cite, like Singapore, Singapore today owes over 100% of their GDP. But they have a clear law that all borrowed money must be for investment. Japan owes over 200% of their GDP in debt. But Kade, the money Japan borrowed, most of their debt, apart from being domestic, were used for the economy and the people of Japan. And they, today, the highest holder of US treasuries up until maybe two years ago, I don't know what happened. China, every other person we reference, have huge debts. But you could see where those debts were invested in. Today, we are the number three highest debtor to World Bank. That happened within the past one year. We actually estimated that the way we are going will soon be number one. Highest debt. The projection is that we'll have a, more than 150 trillion. A country without anything to show for it. Currently, country like Bangladesh is within those three highest debtors of World Bank. But Kade could see the difference. It is very clear, in 2015, let me not go back for that, 2015, when this APC government started, our debt was a third of what it is today. We are now over 100 and something billion dollars. We are now in a situation where we can't explain what happened, but just look at a country like Bangladesh. In 2015, they had huge debts with a GDP of 195 billion and per capita of about 1,300. Today, Bangladesh, as of 2023, is with a GDP of over 400 and $60 billion, with a per capita of over 2,500. Nigeria in 2005 had a GDP of over nearly 500 billion, with per capita of over 2,500. Today, our per capita it's just about a little bit over a thousand. Okay. That is the crisis you face. And we have tripled our debts. That means the money we borrowed, we are all either swallowed by snakes, <laughs> pythons, um, tortoises, uh, monkeys, all of things. That's why we are now in, in this uh, new song of Gogo Gogo. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Maybe we put the money, the elephants <laughs> even followed and ate the money because the man goes to parties. Okay. So it's a crisis yeah, situation. A, okay, the go, go, go one really got me. With all the issues with political parties in Nigeria, do you honestly expect that we can get good leaders from them? With what is happening in PDP, what is happening in APC, what is happening in Labour Party, what is happening in NMPP, do you really think that we can get good leaders from these political parties, the way they are structured? At least we can all agree that 
the problem of Nigeria, at the heart of it, is bad leadership. Whether we say it is foreign interference, the IMF and the World Bank and the CIA that are controlling our leaders, is because of bad leadership. That's why that is possible. We had good leaders, that will not happen. So, bad leadership, the problem. Oh, the problem is constitution. Oh, yeah, we will have new constitution if the leaders were good. They will give us a good constitution. Oh, the problem is marginaliz uh, marginalization. Bad policies, they all stem from bad leadership. So if we all agree that at the heart of the problems of Nigeria is bad leadership, I want to ask, since leaders come from political parties, right now there are no independent candidates in Nigeria. So our leaders come from political parties. I want to ask, with the way the political parties are structured now, APC, PDP, Labour Party, NNPP, do you really expect, honestly, that we can get credible leaders to come out from such political parties, any of them?